Now, folks, a little bit earlier on in the show, I said that what we are seeing is going to lead to a complete breakdown of the system, a breakdown of the ecological system, a breakdown of the social system, and virtually a breakdown of all the Earth systems. This is what we are heading towards, and this can really be clearly seen because it's the only logical conclusion to our actions. But what many people are failing to see is that this is a controlled breakdown. The old adage of auto ab chao, order out of chaos. And this is what's being played out right before our eyes. You see, as the earth systems break down and the social systems break down and the environmental systems break down, we will see the control and surveillance grid become more and more visible and we'll see more people being drawn into mass population areas. See, what we're seeing, folks, is Agenda 21. What we are seeing is the consolidation of the corporate system. Now, folks, I've done entire shows where I've talked about the concept of total criminalization. I've talked about how every time things become more visible, the cost of living is ramped up in order to keep people running faster and faster on the treadmill so they never have time to deal with what's going on around them. And we're seeing all of this stuff being played out as well. The cost of electricity, the cost of basic services in countries now are literally going through the roof, causing people to run faster and faster and faster. And of course, as these prices raise, more people are discarded by the system. They become homeless. And so we see them getting into more conflict with authorities and councils and they end up being brutalised and terrorised by police, and they end up incarcerated within the prison system. And while the cost of being alive is being ramped up more and more all the time, we are finding jobs within all industries becoming scarcer and scarcer and scarcer. And the only jobs that are really opening up are jobs in the military, jobs in the mining industry, or jobs in basic construction or hospitality. So as the cost of living is rising and rising, it's becoming harder and harder for the average people to find employment. Of course, there still may be some factory work in certain countries, doing things such as weapons manufacture. But apart from that, it really is getting extremely limited in what people can do to collect the paper that they need in order to be alive. And prices just keep going up. And this is all being done by design, folks. It's all being done to further widen the gap between the controllers and those who are controlled. And it's basically bringing this discarding of humanity up to a very, very refined and very dramatic level. And there are a great many other systems of control that are being employed as well. And one of the most important of them is the control that is exercised over the food of the people. And it isn't just control over the flow of food and the marginalization of different countries that occurs, it's also control over the food itself. And what I'm talking about, of course, is the genetic modification of the food. Now, there have been all sorts of tests done on animals, on rats and mice, which show very, very clearly that genetically modified food is very damaging to animals that eat it over successive generations and yet this food is being quite literally forced upon people in western nations and of course there are some nations that have woken up to this nations such as Hungary which burnt thousands of acres of Monsanto corn and banned Monsanto corn from the country because they can see how damaging it is to the environment and how damaging it is to people who consume it. And look, there's a lot of people, a lot of farmers who know this as well, but the problem is that they're being forced into using Monsanto seeds anyway due to practices such as geoengineering or chemtrails because a lot of the stuff that's in the air in the chemtrails, a lot of the aluminium content of the chemtrails is affecting the soil in very adverse ways. And so many people's crops are failing unless they use Monsanto aluminium-resistant seeds. And so even for people who are growing organic gardens, these gardens are being attacked by the very elements themselves because of what this system is putting into the atmosphere, what it is putting into the rain, what it's putting into the water systems and the entire ecological system of the planet. 
There really is a massive genetic alteration program happening on Earth, folks, a massive program to genetically modify all life on the planet. And this is really the only logical conclusion I can come to when I look at all of the things that are being done. Because when you do take it all into account, when you look at what is actually in the chemtrails, when you look at the amount of GM food that's being forced upon the people, and you look at the studies that have been done on this food, then you start looking into things such as research that's being done on saliva samples, research that's been done on atmospheric samples, soil samples, water samples. And you really start looking at things and putting things in perspective. And this is actually what's happening, folks. We are seeing a mass genetic modification program. It's been carried out on virtually the entire planet and it's happening right under people's noses and it's happening without their permission and this is also agenda 21 this is the artificial splitting of the species that's been talked about and been suggested by so many researchers it's actually happening right now and people just aren't paying attention and not that it's their fault that most of them aren't paying attention because most of them have been indoctrinated into this system, into this social system, into this corporate and business system, and they actually think it's real and they're kept so busy running so fast on the treadmill that they simply don't have time to stop and look around and see what's really going on here. And folks, this is what's going on. Well, according to all the evidence anyway. And so, of course, the question becomes, okay, well, we know it's going on, so what do we do about it? That's the problem. It's one thing to know all this stuff and to be aware of it around you, but the question is, how do we combat what's happening? How do we turn things around? And, of course, the only way we're going to be able to do that is by increasing public awareness. And everybody can do their own little bit to do that, folks. There's all sorts of ways to increase public awareness, even something as simple as a bumper sticker on your car. I'm getting some Crow House bumper stickers actually made up, the crowhouse.com. I'm going to be sticking one of them on my car and giving them out to friends. I'm sure there's places online that you can go to to purchase bumper stickers and things, folks. I mean, you can just go there and, and make your own up. I mean, I could probably get some made and try to sell you crow house bumper stickers but you could always go and get some bumper stickers yourself just to order half a dozen or ten or something online and give them out to your friends do it for not just my website but other websites that you think will help and other pieces of information that you think people need to know simply google new world order i mean anything folks you could put anything anywhere just to help increase public awareness you can start having group meetings with friends in your area start having group meetings with the community and discussing these issues with them not forcing information down their throats not ramming paranoia down their throats or forming militias or anything but just talking to people working to help people understand what's going on a little bit more and working to build support and unity and camaraderie within your community just just getting to know people and helping them become aware so that you all know you have each other's backs and that if there is difficulty in some area with the government or with the council, then you're all going to stand together. And start doing things in your community, folks. It doesn't matter if there's legislation there that says you can't. You've got to start acting in civil disobedience. But you've got to be doing so with the support of your community because all of your community needs to stand together with you. That's the thing. Non-compliance, folks, but it's got to be done on a mass level. You've got to have communal support. So you need to be having these meetings, having town meetings, having information nights, discussion nights. All the things that we used to have in the old days that formed those bonds within our community. Learn the power of giving. Start giving to your neighbours. Start giving to people around you. Not just material objects, but start giving of yourself to people around you. All of these things really, really do make a difference, and these are the things that are missing from our community and missing from our society in modern times. We find ourselves out giving to people, but it's in a very contrived way. Very often we're trying to sell them whatever multi-level marketing product we're using. 
or it's to do with some other hierarchical system, some social group that we belong to or whatever. But a lot of the real interpersonal contact and interpersonal relations has been taken out of many social groups that people attend. Many of these social groups are very, very contrived. We need to be having just community groups, nights where we all just get together and talk about things that concern us and ways that we can deal with these things in a peaceful and constructive manner. I don't know, folks, I still believe we can do things peacefully. I really do. I don't believe we need violence in any of these confrontations. I mean, as I said earlier, we may need to exercise enough force to defend ourselves on occasion, but I still think there are better ways of doing things. I really do. You know, the potential that we hold as a species, folks, is really so phenomenal. We are really capable of so much. And I really believe that all people really need is an opportunity to be able to step back and see that for themselves. It's just that because they're forced to work within this system and to run so hard and work so hard in order to survive, they really just never get the time to do so. But I think it's break time here, folks, so I'll leave you there for now, and we'll go and have a break. Thank you for joining me on the show today, and I'll speak to you again in a few minutes.